Silverfern Farms have been developing X-ray and robotic technologies for some time. As the technology has advanced, they're uncovering more information than expected. For example, it's been established that while most lambs have 13 pairs of ribs, between 5 and 12 per cent have 14 pairs. Innovation manager Grant Pearson explains the implications of the findings. Well, it's a long development over the last five or six years by Robotic Technologies Limited, which is a joint venture between Silverfern Farms and Scott Technology. The vision was a, a, an automated boning room where basically all of the, the breaking down of, of the meat uh, through to packing was fully automated, uh, or as far as we could take it. So the, that vision saw robots and other automation equipment and technologies like imaging systems and X-ray to work out how to do all the cuts and how to break it down and do all the trimming. We've got a combination of technology here. We've got an X-ray primal cutting system where we have an X-ray unit at the front analysing every carcass and calculating where to make cuts. So the primal cutting automation system can then separate out the forequarter from the middle and the middle from the leg of every carcass. And that flows on to a hindquarter robot boning system uh, where we bone out the pairs of hindquarters and, and the, all of the cuts then flow out into our main room for processing. Part of it was safety. We were looking to remove uh, a lot of high risk jobs like band sawing and, and knife work. Uh, part of it was yield improvement, uh, partly because of band saws, but also some of the automation equipment can give better yield of meat, uh, leave, leave less on the bones, and labour saving as well. We're learning more about lambs. Uh, you know, I guess the information's always been there, but nobody focused on it. What we've been finding is that uh, is the variation in rib count on the carcasses, where something around 10% uh, have got 14 ribs and most of the rest are 13, and we get a few with 12. So it's pointing towards using that information to do different things with each carcass, so that we can, if a 14 rib carcass may be uh, good for cutlets, uh, 12 rib might be better for a bonus product. Uh, the other thing is, is the, uh, the rib angle varies a lot uh, and that means you get on some racks you get nice square ribs and on others they're, they're at quite an angle and, and again we, we haven't explored that in terms of the market effect but it does look like we should be separating the variation and, and pointing some to one market and, and others to another. Five. If we can establish better market value from carcasses through these diagnostic systems, then that's information we can start feeding back to farmers. Uh, particularly those that have EID systems, uh, they can then, like the breeders, they can feed that information back into their breeding programs uh, to get uh, better yielding animals, uh, to get the right number of ribs, uh, to get nice square uh, rib cages, all of the sorts of things that aren't really factored into the breeding value uh, calculations at the moment. What's the cut accuracy like at the moment? Five rib at the moment, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's still cutting. Robotic through, gear something. in the meat industry is a new phenomenon, and basically we have to improve our skill level. Uh, of the people uh, working on these machines and that will be my uh, probably biggest challenge in the near future. I think initially um, uh, as uh, the new human nature when you talk robotic gear, mechanising um, tasks uh, is job losses and uh, so there was a bit of a negative impact uh, from the workers based on that uh, but they actually bought into this project uh, with uh, great interest. Um, they prefer to have the robots running at the moment because the product comes through at a nice steady pace, uh, which they love, so they can work at a steady pace in the room. Uh, it removes all the hazardous tasks uh, from them, uh, which means that we can locate those staff into other positions. Uh, so in actual fact, you know, there was no job losses by the introducing of this, and the workers are actually buying into it now. If you just look at the, the robots uh, doing the job, you know, it looks very basic. But if you look at all the input parameters that goes in behind the scenes, a lot of calculations needs to be done for the robots to actually perform that task. And, and I think that's a challenge for the meat industry, that each and every carcass is totally different. And there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes computer calculations, algorithms that needs to tie in together to actually make a very simple task work with robotic equipment. 
We're probably about halfway in terms of the carcass boning technology. We, we can break the carcass into three pieces, we can bone the, the hindquarters or the legs. Uh, the next stage which we're working on now is, is, is the trimming and, and automatic, uh, 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 the automatic trimming of the four quarter cuts and then on to automatic French rack production. So we'll, we'll gradually have all the sub-primal systems up and running over the next two to three years. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.